Today, we would like to invite you to share in an old-fashioned Christmas pageant. This is one in which we are all, all meaning everybody in this room today, all will take part in, no matter whether you are young or old. At the heart of the Christmas season is the story of a baby's birth. It's a story that we have all heard, some of us many times, some of us not so many. Today's worship service is designed to help us not only to hear that familiar story again, but to enter into it, letting it become part of us, letting ourselves become part of it. We invite you this morning to set aside your usual order of worship. This pageant allows each of us to be more than just spectators, but to experience the Christmas story in a brand new way. The characters in the story are well known to us. Mary and Joseph and their baby, the angels, the shepherds, the wise men, and the townspeople of Bethlehem. We've prepared things so that others will have a little something on to help us get into the spirit of the pageant. We will hand out these things in a moment as we tell you what part you will be playing in our pageant. We would like some of you to be angels, so we have some stars for you to carry. We will need some of you to be shepherds, and we have some shepherd staffs for you. We will also need some folks to be the magi or the wise people. Um, we're not going to limit ourselves to just three men this year. Uh, we have some very nice gifts for you to bring to the baby Jesus. The rest of you folks will be townspeople of Bethlehem. For, and for you, we have a nice assortment of scarves and lanterns and other things to get you ready. Also, our children have a part to play in this. The children will be playing the animals that come to the, to the manger. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We have this taken care of too. We have an assortment of animals that will be put up here. Now, I'd like to introduce our leaders. Nancy will be representing the wise folks. Bud will be representing the shepherds. Harry will be representing the angels. And Deborah will be representing the animals. They will be making their way around to pick their team. Let's take a moment to prepare for our very special Christmas pageant. Huh? Oh, and, and I'm sorry. I just got really, I got carried away with the excitement. I forgot. And Marty will be representing our townspeople. Everybody gets a part. Let's prepare for our very special Christmas pageant. Does everybody have a part to play? Yeah, they're like, yeah, if I ain't got a part to play, I ain't raising my hand. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a part to play. Okay. The story will unfold today through a combination of narration, scripture readings, and the presence of our puppet team, also through the words and music of several of our most familiar Christmas carols and special music. The words for the carols are all printed for you on the screen of the service, on, of the, on the screen, and you won't have to use the hymn books at all. We will sing them seated, no instrumental accompaniment today. Okay, some of that was, was ad lib, so I gotta figure out where I am now. <laughs> okay, at, at different points in the service, we'll, we'll be inviting all of you, the angels, the shepherds, the wise people, uh, the townspeople, to come and become a part of the scene up front. You can either gather around the manger or stand in, at the front or be seated in the front pews on the hay bale or wherever. Um, just make sure there's room for everyone to see the manger. Our hope is that we can feel comfortable coming up in the front and join with each other in a spirit of this event. If you find it too difficult, please do what is most comfortable for you. Now, we will begin the Christmas pageant. This is the story of Jesus' birth. When he came to share our life, to share, to share our life, we celebrate the miracle of God's love as we remember this, this in particular, and once again, the Christmas story. Please join us as we sing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. O Come, All Ye Faithful. 
The gospel tells how the angel Gabriel was sent from God to tell Mary thank you, thank you, and Joseph that Mary would have a child and that he should call his name Jesus. Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38 reads this way. In the sixth month of, of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth in a town called Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are most highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and give you the power of the Most High, and, you will, over, and will overshadow you. So the Holy, Holy One will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is, has conceived and is her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fall. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your words be, 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 be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. You can go down, Mary.
Mary, Joseph, and the donkey enter the scene. Mary, Joseph, and donkey enter the scene. Okay. The scene was Bethlehem, small town south of Jerusalem. The prophets had said that this is where the Messiah would be born. Will you please join us as we sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. A little town of Bethlehem. I flipped my page this way. This is called an unrehearsed Christmas pageant, by the way. Did you notice this? Okay. Little town of Bethlehem, how still we see Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that, was, that took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the manger. <coughs> Mary, Joseph, and Donkey may exit the scene. Last year I had no voice to sing. We had music. This year I have a voice. We have no music. But we'll sing. <laughs> oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of my dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope the weary soul rejoices For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn Born, oh, night, oh. 
his love and his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break, the slave is still our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, no, divine, oh, night when Christ was born. Mary, Joseph, and the donkey re-enter the scene. In a stable, Jesus was born. Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. They knew that the baby born that night was no ordinary child, but the Messiah, God's own son. They named him Jesus. Please join us as we sing Away in the Manger. Away. of Bethlehem was sleeping, not knowing what important event was happening. But in the fields on the hills nearby, shepherds were watching their flocks. Suddenly, a great light appeared, and the shepherds were afraid. Please join us in singing the first Noel. The first Noel. Don't make me come back there. <laughs> All of you angels, come forward.
Do not be afraid, for I bring good news to you. Today, your Savior has been born. His name is Jesus. You will find him lying in a manger. Let's go and see this baby. When the sky was clear again, the shepherds went to Bethlehem and came to the stable where Mary, Joseph, and the newborn baby were. Just as the angel had said, they knelt before the manger. Meanwhile... The Magi had seen a bright star rising in the east, and it followed it to Bethlehem. We know this didn't happen the same night, but when they finally saw the child, they too bowed down and worshipped him. We bring gifts, we bring gold, frankincense, mirth, and more gifts. For those that can't do the steps, the animals can help them. <laughs> Would you please join us as we continue singing the first Noel?
townspeople, filled with curiosity, also went to see what had happened. As you have come forward, we thank you very much. Thanks to all who have participated in this wonderful reenactment of God's gift of love. We're about to attempt the impossible and have everybody return to their seats. But let me give you a few instructions as you're heading back. If you have brought a gift for the baby Jesus this morning, an offering, we ask that you please put it in the white envelope you were giving and place it there in one of the offering plates on either side of the steps. As you are returning, we also ask that you please come to the communion table, pick up a little, a little wafer as well as your cup of juice, and return to your seat, and we will, have, we will have communion together. I realize this is going to be a little chaotic, but before we get started, how about we have a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day, and we thank you for the story that you have given us. Heavenly Father, as we continue to celebrate and we continue to worship, we just ask that you do everything possible to help us to remember this is the reason that we celebrate, God. Will you bless this time of communion? In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Please begin to make your way. That includes the people behind the stage and the kids as well.
Now I'd like to ask everybody to please bow their heads. And I would like for you to just take a moment, just a few minutes. Turn off the hustle and bustle of Christmas. Forget about the list of things that you have to do to get your house ready for the guests that you're going to have tomorrow. Forget about Christmas lists, Christmas trees, lights that only work sometimes. Forget about family members that you're going to be spending time with tomorrow and over the next few days. Take all of the things that you usually associate with the word Christmas and just for a moment, just for a very, very brief moment, push it all aside. And as you push it aside, I want you to make room. Make room for a little, small infant, probably no more than seven or eight pounds, probably not any longer than two feet, born in a city, far ago, far away, long ago. Is there room in your life for him this day? We're going to just sit here in silence for just a moment. Dear God, we thank you for the present of Christmas. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for the fact that you gave up heaven to come to us. But Lord, you didn't come just to be born in a manger. You came to live a perfect, sinless life. And you began to think at that point. Let us partake.
Okay. In reality, if I followed a little piece of paper, my one line left is, have a blessed Christmas. But um, I wanted you to think about something this morning. So what did you think? This was our Christmas pageant. And you know what? Yeah, you can give yourselves a hand. You're the actors. But you know, um, it didn't go exactly as planned, but we knew it wouldn't. We were okay with that. Kids got wiggly. Um, people didn't enter on cue when they weren't supposed when they were supposed to. They didn't exit on cue when they were supposed to. But um, let me just, if you're visiting with us this morning, let me just tell you, nobody got a copy of this before we started. Um, the copies were held to only a very few people. And, and then we had one brief rehearsal for me and Rich to come in and get the narration going back and forth. And there was a point to it all. See, ours didn't go off without a hitch. You know, it just doesn't work that way. But I want you to think about the very first Christmas pageant. Think about what God had to put in place and humanity was not ready for it. At the right moment in time, right on cue, Mary had to be willing to put her life on hold to be the mother of Jesus. Right on cue, Joseph had to accept the responsibility to be the father of the very son of God. Right on cue, Caesar Augustus had to, enter, had to do, had make a decree to bring Mary and Joseph to the right city. Right on cue, the baby had to be born. The manger had to be ready. The stable had to be there. Right on cue, the Magi had to show up bearing their gifts. Of course, you realize what that meant. The star had to show up just at the right time so they would be there at just the right moment. And here's the thing. God's plan went off without a hitch. It was all perfectly done so that Jesus could be born in a manger in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Can you imagine how much orchestrating that took from God? It took thousands of years for him to get humanity ready to receive this tiny gift that would one day grow and give his life on a cross for each and every one of us. How about that for a performance? And just so you know, there is no encore. This was God's plan all along, that he would send his one and only son. This is what it says in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's the story of Christmas. God has come. We're not going to do this as an untraditional worship service. That's okay. We're, good. We're getting good at untraditional around here. Um, we're also going to do a very untraditional invitation. We're not going to have some special song where I'm going to give you a moment to come forward. But I would like to tell you this. If you're here today and you have never unwrapped this gift, you've never made Jesus part of your life, we're going to sing a song and then we're going to dismiss. But if you need to talk, there's a lot of stuff that's got to be cleaned up. I'll be here a little while. You're more than welcome to pull me aside and say, you know what? How do I make Jesus part of my life? I can put everything else on my holiday list on hold if you need to sit down and discuss what it means to follow Christ. I'm going to ask, would you please stand? And we're going to close this service by singing Silent Night. But before we start singing... I have something I need to tell you on your way out. In the spirit of the old-fashioned Christmas pageant, as you're heading out, Margaret will be at one door. Do we have somebody at the other door, Lynn? Yeah, Rachel. Rachel will be at one door. Margaret will be at the other door. They have a little small brown bag. Don't get too excited. It's not like a key to a car or anything, but it is a traditional Christmas gift that they used to give at churches long ago every Sunday, and we hope you enjoy it. Would you please prepare as we sing Silent Night? And somebody else is coming forward to lead this besides me. Uh...